How was the Nazarite vow completed? This is the question that we seek to answer today as we continue our verse-by-verse -verse study of the book of Numbers on walking through the Bible. If you have a Bible with you, turn to Numbers chapter 6. We're going to be reading from verses 13 to 21. If you don't have a Bible, don't worry. Just follow along with us on the screen. The version that we'll be reading from is the New King James Version. So, Numbers chapter 6, beginning at verse 13. Now this is the law of the Nazarite. When the days of his separation are fulfilled, he shall be brought to the door of the tabernacle of meeting. And he shall present his offering to the Lord, one male lamb in its first year without blemish as a burnt offering, one ewe lamb in its first year without blemish as a sin offering, one ram without blemish as a peace offering, a basket of unleavened bread, cakes of fine flour mixed with oil, unleavened, wafer, uh, unleavened wafers anointed with oil, and their grain offerings with their drink offerings. Then the priest shall bring them before the Lord and offer his sin offering and his burnt offering, and he shall offer the ram as a sacrifice of a peace offering to the Lord with the basket of unleavened bread. The priest shall also offer its grain offering and drink and its drink offering. Then the Nazarite shall shave his consecrated head at the door of the tabernacle of meeting and shall take the hair from his consecrated head and put it on the fire which is under the sacrifice of the peace offering. And the priest shall take the boiled shoulder of the ram, one unleavened cake from the basket, and one unleavened wafer, and put them upon the hands of the Nazarite after he has shaved his consecrated hair. And the priest shall wave them as a wave offering before the Lord. They are holy for the priest, together with the breast of the wave offering and the thigh of the heave offering. After that, the Nazarite may drink wine. This is the law of the Nazarite who vows to the Lord the offering for his separation. And besides that, whatever else his hand is able to provide, according to the vow which he takes, so he must do according to the law of his separation. In our last lesson, we began our discussion of the Nazarite vow. This vow was a vow of separation and dedication to the Lord. It would normally be taken for a period of time, but it could also be taken for an extended period of time, and in fact, be for life, as was the case in Samson, Samuel, and John the Baptist. The vow required that the person refrain from all products of the grape, whether, whether it was fermented juice or unfermented juice, the skins, or even the seeds. It required that the Nazarite not cut their hair, and it required the Nazarite not to come near a dead body. If they broke these things, even accidentally, they sinned, would cut their hair and then offer the proper sacrifices at the appropriate time. Their vow would then have to restart all the way back at the beginning. So that was the vow itself and its restrictions. Now what about what would happen when the vow was completed? Verses 13 to 21 deals with that. When the days of their separation were, were fulfilled, the Nazarite would offer four sacrifices, a burnt offering of a male lamb in its first year without blemish. This type of sacrifice was discussed in Leviticus 1. They would offer a sin sacrifice for any sin they committed, one ewe lamb in its first year without blemish. This type of sacrifice was discussed in Leviticus 4. They would offer a grain offering and a drink offering, a basket of unleavened bread, cakes of fine flour mixed with oil and unleavened wafers anointed with oil. This type of offering was discussed in Leviticus 2 and Leviticus 23. And finally, they would offer one ram without blemish for a peace offering. That type of offering was discussed in Leviticus 3. These were four of the five major sacrifices found in Leviticus. Why wasn't a trespass offering offered? Because that was an offering where restitution needed to be made. None was required here, so the sacrifice wasn't made. The burnt offering, grain offering, and peace offering were given of their own free will as a sign of thanksgiving to God, and the sin offering for any sin that they committed that needed to be atoned for. Once the sacrifices were offered according to the law, the Nazarite would shave their consecrated head at the door of the tabernacle of meeting, and the hair would be burned under the fire of the peace offering. The hair wasn't sacrificed on the altar, it was merely burned in that fire because the hair was consecrated for this vow. Now, since a woman could take this vow, would she shave her head? According to the passage, the answer is yes. Whether that meant she was completely bald or simply almost bald, I don't know, but it does signify the end of the vow. Her hair would then be grown back to its normal length, and the man's hair would be regrown to its normal length. Along with the priest's normal portion of the offerings made to the Lord, in the case of the Nazarite offerings, 
The boiled shoulder of the ram, one unleavened cake, and one unleavened wafer would be placed in the now shorn Nazarite as a wave offering before the Lord. They would be holy for the priest as well, meaning that this vow was even a communion not only between God and the Nazarite, but between the Nazarite and the priest of God as well, in that further sacrifice is given to the priest. After all the sacrifices were done, the prohibitions against great products was removed, and the person could return to daily life unrestricted by the terms of this vow. The section closes by saying that the Nazarite can offer above and beyond what the Lord has prescribed here, as he so desires of his own free will, but must complete what he has vowed. This vow must not be forced worship, but a free will vow of dedication to the Lord. And even though it is not practiced today under Christ, devoting time to the Lord is not wrong. In fact, it should be encouraged for Christians to do so, that we have an opportunity to focus on our spiritual life as well. With that, our time is up for today. The Lord willing, we hope you'll join us for tomorrow's discussion of Numbers chapter 6, verses 22 to 27, as we continue our walk through the Bible, one verse at a time. I'm not a Thank you for watching today's episode. We hope that you found it edifying and ask that you not only subscribe to our channel and podcast, but that you like and share this episode among your friends so that the saving gospel of Jesus Christ can go out to the whole world.